returned and reached its zenith in a double wide trailer in Ojai with wood panel walls and beige carpet. A boomerang child, after the Zen monastery and grad school, I moved back in with my mother while Saturn was transiting the sign of Leo. Follow Highway 150 from the Pacific Ocean and wind your way east through the Topa Topa Mountains, past family farms with hand-painted signs for marmalade and strawberries, past places with gingham curtains in the kitchen and goats in the yard, and you'll find the little town of Ojai. I hadn't spent much time with my mother since a few summers previous. She was living in a trailer then, too, in the eucalyptus groves and tar sands of Elwood Beach near Santa Barbara. That mobile home park was the only place she could afford, and then only because her income from her administrative job at the local university was supplemented by the treasury of Pete, a man 20 years her senior, whom I loathed, a wealthy retired Boy Scout official from Santa Fe with a long white ponytail. He'd never had any children of his own and couldn't understand why my mother tried so hard to forge a good relationship with me, her prickly, wayward daughter. My mother wasn't the only woman Pete was helping. I don't think my mother even liked Pete even though she tried hard to convince herself that she did. Whenever I asked her what she saw in him, she always told me she was grateful to him. When she first got divorced, he'd offered to let her stay with him for free in his condo at Leisure World, the retirement community in Long Beach where my great-grandmother had lived when I was a kid with her beanbag frog and Andy's mint candy. Later, he paid the ridiculously expensive space rental in my mother's Elwood home, mobile home. Never having fully recovered from her divorce, my mother had a hacking cough at that place. There'd been an electrical fire in the walls while she was sleeping, from which she'd narrowly escaped with her life. And after the firemen came and sprayed the house with fuzzy green chemicals, she was too tired and too depressed to clean the mess away. I arrived months later to find her sitting in a pool of chemical cancer spores, willing herself to get a long, slow kick off Kiriaki Island. Every time she coughed, it was as if she drove a spike into my hand. It pained me that much. I wanted her to take care of herself. And she refused. It was like it just wasn't important to her. Witches need to keep practicing witchcraft, even if we're busy, even if we're depressed. When witches stop practicing witchcraft, we languish. My mother was pasty white and swollen then. Her witch practice at that time had dwindled to the point where it was mainly conceptual. She thought about the goddess still, reading books like Merlin Stone's Ancient Mirrors of Womanhood, but she no longer made braids of cardamom-infused llama spread or held monthly full moon ceremonies with her moon group. Her best friend and moon groupie, Ginny, lived in the trailer across the way, but she too was busy working all the time. Three jobs, two demanding sons, both she and my mother were too exhausted to do much more than sit on the couch together and commiserate. Mm -hmm.